How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf, and uh, today I'm going to show you what I believe, pretty strongly, from trial and error and all sorts, um, to be the fastest, best, easiest, quickest way to complete the mission you need to do to unlock the Cosmodrome map, and uh, I mean it's a pretty bloody tiny spoiler at this point, but if for anyone who doesn't want to know this tiny little bit of information, skip ahead about 20 seconds now, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Um, yeah, for the rest of you, if you unlock Cosmodrome, that Zix 605 thing is on Cosmodrome somewhere, so, and out of all the new trucks and scouts, whatever they've added, that's the only thing that's going to be like, Diflock's always on, it's it's like a bigger, fatter, juicier dolphin from the looks of things, it was the top truck really, back in Mudrunner, so, yeah, it's the one really we're all going to want so we can uh, get, get along a bit easier in these maps, really. Um, as well, I'm actually going to do two missions. The mission you need to do is called A Heap of Work, but as well, you're best off doing uh, another mission first called Warehouse Trouble. Thanks to uh, Omar Aziz, I hope I've pronounced that right, uh, for mentioning it. But it's, somebody else asked me, um, how do you unlock Cosmodrome? And I was wondering myself, and I was nearly going to Google it or YouTube, whatever. And then I thought, hang on a minute, I, I was unlocking like Quarry and Zimnagors the other week on one of the live streams or whatever, and I remember it said uh, access to Gateway as one of the rewards in the mission, so I scanned through all my missions and found, uh, yeah, what the, a heap of work, the contract is called, uh, it's in the bottom lot of contracts, um, yeah, it was, it said access to Gateway and the Aegis, in, Aegis installation map is already unlocked, so it had to be the Cosmodrome one. And then uh, I was also looking through some of the other missions, and I seen uh, one of them said access to location, but I didn't really know what it mean. And then literally 10 minutes later I read, uh, yeah, Omar Aziz's message saying, do warehouse trouble first. Long story short, if you don't do this warehouse trouble first, you're going to have to go and turn some metal rolls into metal beams. But if you do the warehouse trouble first, you unlock an extra bit of warehouse, and you unlock metal beams, so you just cut out like a trollish part of the mission, probably the most trollish part to be honest. So yeah, well worth doing. It'll be quicker in the long run. This is the setup I'm running. I would recommend it, because again, trial and error. I mean, the Dolphins are pretty much the best trucks in the game. Um, you can adjust it, like, whatever suits your style, if you want different trucks, whatever. But uh, you need 12 slots of cargo, hence why I'm doing double Dolphins, and I've got, like, two sideboards and then two four-slot ramped flatbeds. So that's my 12 uh, slots. I'm bringing loose for anyone else, if you've seen my videos, <laughs> you know goddamn well I'm bringing the beast. Um, but for anyone who's new, it's just, there's spares, repairs on them, It's a set, oh, like, there's a winch on it so I can flip myself back if I roll and all sorts. It's just an extra chance to get past a bit of a iffy moment. Um, yeah, so basically, I'm going to set off from this garage and cut across, like, down here. You don't need to go, I've been going like out the garage and left, but that little 90 degree turn was just so trollish. You're best off driving straight out the garage. I went out that way uh, yesterday when I went and did the bottoms up mission. So cut across the ice, cut along here, stay nice and tight there because there's some uh, breakable ice. Go over that next little section that's pretty much touching, up that snowbank hill and then you're here to this warehouse. This is on the little island where there's a bridge either side that's not built yet. And yeah, as you can see at the minute, there's already one warehouse there, and you've got stuff like service spare parts there, and there's metal rolls there, which you would have to go and convert into beams, and I assume some people have. But yeah, this is just a much better way. So first things first, like I said, get all your road trains set up. One thing I definitely would recommend taking, even if you don't want to take the loose or you do different trucks, whatever, um, I've put a scout fuel thing in the uh, back of the Dolphin. It's just loose, pretty much, but where I'm going it'd be nice to have some fuel basically I've got fuel on the loafs and to be honest I definitely believe I could have made it there and back with just the fuel on the loafs but to be honest it's just I'm going to be going that sort of area more often because I've got two bridges to build in the area and a couple of landslides to clear and all sorts so having 900 litres of fuel just sat exactly where yeah it'd be handy it's just like a good good practice really it's it's going to benefit me worse more than it's going to cost me one day, <laughs> well, I don't know, I was going to say, I've already, there's already about eight free range trailers scattered across this map already, so, I, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit relaxed with releasing my trailers into the wild. So there's that bit I just drove over. Again, thanks, somebody was saying, like, cut over there. I did it yesterday with the, uh, bottoms up mission. I went and delivered that semi fuel trailer with a loaf, but yeah, still, cheers for letting us know, because it is quicker cutting over there. The, 
where I was like smashing out the fence and doing that 90 degree turn, I edited three and a half minutes out of the video yesterday just to do a 90 degree turn. Like, it's in, that was like that death mud that's this new super duper stuff that's just a no go zone completely. So, yeah, cutting out there is actually not too bad. It's funny, it, back in the day it would have been super snow. <laughs> now it's like, oh yes, it's only super snow. <laughs> I can actually move at five miles an hour, so it was pretty good. Um, I mean, when you think about it, to be honest, it's probably going to take me about three and a half minutes to get from the garage to where I'm going now, instead of ten foot round a 90 degree corner. So this is the bit where you want to stay nice and tight to these rocks, because everything to the right of me is breakable ice. Some of it's quite obvious, but you'll see... Uh, there, I'm sure you'll see some of the yeah there, some of the ice start to crack. That was less obvious that it's breakable, and you can hear it going. So uh, yeah, you want to try and avoid that. So yeah, drive to this next section where these two little bits are practically touching. I kept it pinned for that one. I didn't take any damage, but I've jumped over there a few times, and sometimes you can whack your suspension, and that's the nature of this game. Sometimes you get away with it scot free, and other times it absolutely just obliterates your suspension, a wheel and your fuel tank and all sorts. Again, one of the many reasons, as you'll hear and see throughout the night, is why I bring a loaf with me. It's the equivalent of a uh, a dolphin, like a truck roof rack. Sadly, here, I, I was only doing this bit to recreate the mission. Um, I'd already done it at this point, so I'm not bothered that that scout thing fell out, because I have actually already got a scout thing up there, but obviously in an ideal world, um, if I actually needed it, I would have been paying more attention to it <laughs> to make sure it didn't fly out. But yeah, that's what happened. I just to be honest, like I said, I really don't need it, and I was just restaging this for the footage. Um, this has been—it's uh, always a nightmare to edit these ones because I have to jump back and forth and all sorts. But um, yeah, sometimes after I've done the mission, if I'm not happy with like the smoothness of the footage or whatever, I'd rather just basically go back and recreate the little bits I did or whatever and it just makes the footage a bit like smoother and easier and it's, I suppose shorter in general because it's a uh, I kind of just stick to stick to the plan and drop the hammer and after a lot of trial and error obviously I now know the uh, easiest way so one thing I would say climbing up this hill I should have gone to the right of that tree it's basically gonna like hook my uh, the rear part of my road train in a minute but again it's not the end of the world I just split them up I'm only going about 50 yards in front of me anyway there, there's the warehouse we're kind of pulling up at in front of me so it was no major biggie if it happens just yeah split the road train in half and I'll, uh, I'll take them both up separately so like I said I'm doing all this in little stages because it's uh I just think it was the easiest way to explain this mission it's honestly if you follow what I'm doing it, it isn't that hard it and because I've got the footage here it's edited down to 49 minutes you could probably get this done in about an hour but anyway, the next part of the mission, I'm now at that warehouse, and before we start um, a heap of work, I want to go and do this, yeah, warehouse trouble. So cut down there, jump down the little cliff, zip along here, kind of mirroring the road, really. You can loop around this way and grab it. It's there, basically, the trailer you need to get. Um, I approach from the other direction with a Tatrin, but... And then just double back on yourself. That water there is, like, insanely shallow. You'll have no troubles there. Um, yeah, double back on yourself. I'll show you how to climb back up there. It is a little bit awkward, but not too bad. You'll see it went pretty smoothly. And then, yeah, you get to here and you drop... It's just a little curtain side trailer, so it's not particularly difficult to haul or anything like that. There's nothing to tip over and lose. That's the warehouse you normally have, and you can see you've got, like, service spare parts, and there's metal rolls in there, which a lot of people, I assume, have got metal rolls. And this is why it's worth doing this warehouse trouble, because you can see where I've got to go, like, there and back. If I don't do that, I've got to take metal rolls straight past that trailer, carry on up here, around there, go to that warehouse and swap them for beams, and then I assume sort of drive down here, across here, and then I'm going to double back on myself anyway, so it's literally just a shorter mission, and your reward for doing that mission, you unlock this side, you can now see there's two warehouse circles there, and in this one, you've got wooden planks, which I need for this a heap of work mission, and mainly metal beams, the good thing is there's ten metal beams, so I should be able to fix some of them bridges, like, just from that warehouse. I probably should have done them while I'm there, to be honest. This was when I looped, when I just said you can loop around. This was how insane the snow was, even with the Tatrim, which has got specially coded wheels. So, yeah, I would just do the route, uh, the route I just drew and double back on yourself. But here I am now. I'm grabbing the uh, curtain side tray. Like I said, it's called um, Warehouse Trouble. So the warehouse we've just gone to, I believe you can collect the mission from there. But if not, yeah, I've, I've drew the lines along the map so you can get your way to that point. Um, as you can see, it's just a curtain side trailer. The 
it was nice. I've been it's been nice driving around with the Tatra, and particularly Tatra and Loaf, because they kind of have different strengths. Uh, one of the sort of shame things about the Tatrin is uh, I can't attach the trailer, so I'm already using my winch. It's not the end of the world, obviously. I'm just saying that it'd be handy if I could attach the trailer, because then I've still got a winch, whilst I've also still got the trailer. Um, yeah, this is cutting across. You can see the pylon kind of in front of me as a good little reference point, but you can see the water is, like, insanely shallow. Couldn't even, like, drown a mouse in that. I'm pretty sure it's at this point as well. I've had a few issues with this just in the last couple of days. Hopefully it's just a little bug that's like... will be smoothed out in the next sort of week or so. But I appear to be like not just beached on the rocks. I think I'm like the map's locked me in place again. And you'll see what I mean in a sec. I go to get a winch. <laughs> I wish they would just make winch points. Like whatever I grabbed was the one thing that doesn't stay in the ground. If they just made immovable winch points say tinted red and the ones that can pop out of the ground tinted blue, we'd just know so much easier which is which. Um, yeah, that's full Tatrin power and full winch power, and I'm literally like locked in play. It looks like it goes forward a little bit there, but something's got me. I jiggled around for a minute or two and I got out of there. I assume you can see a few tree branches and that sticking out of the ground. I think it might be them. I think like once your tyres kind of touch them, it sort of phases through them and then locks in place a bit. It's what the ice has been doing again as well. Which they seem to have fixed around phase 3. When I was doing some of the review videos I noticed it when I mess around on uh, Lake Hovden that for part of it but yeah at the minute it seems to be back in force as well. Those little bushes have been gripping me a little bit more than usual but like I said there's usually I don't mind for like the first week or so because with every phase when you're adding a load of new code into the game it is what it is. It tends to cause a slight ripple effect on some things. I don't mind waiting like the first week. It's when they just never sort them that it's a, uh, yeah, just a pain and a shame really. So the, again, the Tatrin's main weakness really is not too keen on rocks, but apart from that. Now what I started doing now was I could have just cut across the mud, but I kind of figured while I was heading back this way, the road, like I said, it sort of mirrored my line anyway. So I just thought, oh, sod it, I'll, I'll drive along the road. It should be a little bit easier save a little bit on fuel. I mean, that's what this new, like, death snow and death mud, all it really costs you is some enjoyment of the game, to be honest, time, that is unnecessary, and fuel, it's, that's basically what they're trying to cost you, is extra fuel when you go in one mile an hour, but you are still burning, you know, 20 litres a minute. You, uh, you don't get far on 200 litres. Yeah, basically, this is I went to drive up that road because the Tatrin doesn't have chain tyres. I just couldn't get up there and I've mentioned it before, like, that's the reason why I have chained on everything because I forget, like, when I drove up there, it was only once I started wheel spinning and couldn't climb up, I was like, oh yeah, shit, <laughs> I need chain tyres, obviously you don't have that option with the Tatrin, but that's the sad thing about these maps in general, is anywhere that's got a road, it's literally like every other tyre is just out of the game at the minute it has to be chained and the Tatrin has been great it's got special sort of coded tires that are grippier than all the normal ones you get a selection of so off-roading stuff like this it's been very handy but yeah as soon as you touch a road like that it just completely luckily I could go this way around but imagine if that was my only way through that's now like <laughs> cancelled the mission there and then I'd have to go and bring something else from the garage with a uh, uh, chain tires so cutting along here, there's you, all right, all that kind of nice shiny blue ice you can see, that's not breakable or anything. They haven't even really hid, hidden anything too mental. In this one, Tatrin's still a. Uh, it's just not a fan of these rocks. Overall, it's just not got very high ground clearance. When I was towing a loaf behind me earlier, I was looking at it and I actually think the loaf, not by much, but has got more ground clearance. And for whatever reason, the loaf is just insanely good at climbing over rocks. This is, yeah, it's sort of its main Achilles heel out of everything. And uh, at some point I will be playing like the modded playthrough and I'll try that APC with that plow on it, but I believe the rocks will just reset every time you, you know, turn the game off and back on or whatever, so it's going to be little to no avail. Not really worth it for the 20 seconds you're going to be stuck on the rocks. You ain't really going to save a lot of time by bringing a plow all the way out there. Um, right, so I'm looping back around this way. Things were looking pretty good so far. This is, to be fair, and this is, like, because I don't do many videos with the Tatrin, even though it's a very solid vehicle, and this is quite a good example of why 
you see me getting caught on the rocks a bit and stuff, but now as well, it's steering is very non-responsive, particularly when you're bumping over things. Even though you could be steering hard left, it can easily swing the front over to the right. And long story short, it did exactly that. Um, and I slipped into the river. And that's pretty much it. I've got an autonomous winch. Look, I'm pretty certain that tree is within range, but it's just not offering me the winch point. It's offering me the trailer winch point, but obviously that I'm just going to pull that into the water with me, which I did, <laughs> pretty much, by the way. Um, right, so, now you've got both your dolphins here. This is what I would do, is just set off with your truck, um, and obviously now I'd be jumping down this bridge in front of me. See there, I was almost gone. Now, if I had rolled there, instead of recovering, I've got a loaf just 50 yards behind me, that could come and flip me back to my wheels. That's another example of if I didn't get out of that by myself. Fortunately, that's one reason I'd recommend taking the Dolphin on this uh, trip, is it's just one of the best trucks in the game. It's pretty bloody good for not rolling. I mean, again, it's not impossible, but it's uh, pretty up there. <laughs> that's what she said. Um, yeah, when you get to this bridge, I've not built that yet. Technically speaking, that bridge would save you a tiny bit of time if it was built, because you wouldn't have to cut down here. However... As you can see, it ain't that bad, and I don't know. It's quicker to jump down here than it's going to be to do an extra mission of building the bridge. Um, yeah, I got wedged on that rock in front of me. I didn't the other time I went down here, but that time I did it is what it is. I just stuck a winch to the tree, swung my nose around, and we're all uh, good to go. See, again, even though I'm tipped pretty far, the dolphin's still got enough weight low down that it doesn't want to go over on its roof if it can help it, so... It's already one of those trucks that you quite often get a bit of a second chance, which is uh, often that's all you need. And then, yeah, this is uh, another little issue I was just showing with the Tatran. I believe partly is all this, like, little slabs of ice again have become glitchy. I've got a winch to that tree, and obviously I'm, I, I knew starting the engine was going to drown me, but I'd already been trying it without the engine. I'm hooking onto the ice and that's it, I'm just locked in place, I can't get the Tatra out. In the end, it didn't really matter to be honest, I was, I was only bringing the Dolphin to grab this trailer. <laughs> so I see you later Tatra, that's your problem. Mr. Lone Wolf delivers. Um, yeah, well driving forward here, it's a little bit awkward. Now, you've probably got two choices, it looks pretty narrow up there, but you probably could, you could either drive forward under that bridge and loop right around. I honestly would suggest the way I go now because well, you'll see, it went pretty well and pretty easy. So, I'm not really going to yeah, be able to drive it up there just on my own power and hopes and dreams. But stick a winch to the front. Thankfully, there's quite a lot of nicely placed trees and everything here. That kind of scoots my nose up to that point. And again, the dolphin's pretty solid at, like, at least helping, assisting. Like, it's got enough power and grip of its own to assist the winches and then yeah I stuck a winch I could reach that lamp post or telegraph pole whatever it is and then we're good to go I think what was holding me back there was one of those OP super branches on the trees again like I said they they could be a boss a boss battle in some games are that bloody hard and yeah get up to the top though and that's it now I'm just doubling back on myself essentially so that trip from what I just did with the Tatrin to where I drowned it, and then say where I just collected this trailer to here, that's like the bit you want to do there and back and just double back on yourself. Because like I showed you, that I went round the long way and the, uh, yeah, the super duper death snow was, uh, it wasn't messing around. Also, be careful with these concrete slabs. This is where, like, little bits like this have a feel of Imandra. That, uh, is it the train station in Imandra? There's those same concrete blocks outside, and you can just touch them at a few mile an hour, and it will completely delete your truck. So, we've got the trailer here. Uh, warehouse trouble. It only pays about three and a half grand. Not great, but it really, honestly, that ain't what this section of the mission's about. Uh, it says something there about thanks, even the cargo's intact, and now you've got a warehouse man in your debt or something. Um, yeah, long story short, stick all the cargo on. Like I said, you need two lots of metal beams, so that's four slots. Um, four lots of wood, 
and then four lots of service fair parts. It made me load them individually and close the window each time there. It doesn't really matter, it's obviously a little bug, but I was only mentioning it because for a split second when I only clicked and it let me load one and that was it, I was like, oh no. Like, I thought, oh, well, that's the whole video <laughs> gone to shit because I'm kind of doing this based on it's the quickest way to do it. And if I now need to go and source service fair parts elsewhere. But thankfully, it's just some little bug that closed the menu each time I loaded one. So I was still able to load all four and we're good to go. So, yeah, once you get them, kind of double round on yourself, go back out. And we're essentially now going to double back on ourselves from this warehouse back to the garage where I originally set off. And like I said, overall, I was pretty happy with this mission because... Funny enough, somebody said in a comment, it must have been a couple of days ago or something. Um, they just put a comment like, oh, I had to do a heap of work to unlock Cosmodrome. And I didn't know that was the name of a contract. I just thought they were generally speaking like, oh, I needed to do a heap of work <laughs> to unlock the Cosmodrome. But yeah, I thought now I've done this, it suddenly clicked like, oh, he literally meant <laughs> the contract, a heap of work. And um, yeah, like I said, I've looped around there. And now I'm going to be going down here back down that snowy hill that I did, over those two little kind of bits that touch and let you jump over. And then, yeah, there's my garage there. Just line your trucks up along the bottom here, facing, like, to the right. You don't need to drive actually back up to the garage, but while you're here, your garage is there. Just bring out your loafs, tatrins, whatever, just something with roof racks. Zip it down, top them up with fuel, you know, repairs, tyres, whatever. You might have blown a few tyres and wrecked the suspension. Jumping those little gaps can, yeah, go either way. You might get away completely scot-free as I did in one of the clips. Or you might kiss your, kiss the bottom half of your truck goodbye. <laughs> that was slightly overshot. I mean, there's not, not a hint enough that there's like four distinct tyre tracks coming out of there. I still managed to somehow drive past it. But yeah, overall I was actually pretty happy with the route I picked, the trucks I picked, everything. Because this ended up being like a lot easier than I thought. I mean, to be fair, we've driven from the garage to that warehouse, which, I don't know, 80-90% of it has been along this flat, smooth, fairly troll-free ice. Um, doing that bit with the Tatrin, there's a few awkward bits, but nothing too insane, like it was doable. And then, yeah, now I'm going back to the garage, so that's like a big chunk of the mission done. And again, massively recommend doing that uh, warehouse trouble first, because I really wasn't in the mood to pull some uh, metal rolls all the way to that factory and turn them into beams. I mean, yeah, when I seen it said access to location, but well, I wasn't sure what I'd be getting for my money. When that guy said it uh, literally uh, makes metal beams appear, it's like, <laughs> that, that was best case scenario. That was about the best news he could have told me. For some reason, going over the first way is easier than coming back this way. I think it's like an awkward shaped rock this side, where it just wants to slip your to the right or to the left, trying to get it dead on in the middle is a bit of a pain. And um, yeah, once you're trying to reverse these bloody dolly trailers, I honestly hate these dolly trailer things with a passion. It's only because I need six cargo slots. And uh, the only choice I've got as far as semi trailers go is the eight slot, which has so many things bolted on underneath it that it catches on everything. So it's a necessity, but yeah, I really can't stand these trailers. Um, as you can see there though, I would recommend probably on this bit, because you're going to do a sharp left hand turn after you go over it, just split the road train in half and take them over one by one. If you cut the corner a bit too much with the first truck, the second one's going to go in and flip and it's just not worth the hassle for the extra I mean, 10 seconds or whatever it's going to take, 10-20 seconds to do them both individually, it's uh, well worth, well worth, yeah, mitigating those risks. So again, get the road train back. And overall, I'm getting used to that now, where there's like the button at the bottom where you can press square to turn the engine on and off. I actually like that. I think that's worked out. It makes sense now that like, in Phase 3 when they did it, obviously it seemed to have... Like, you used to be able to just winch to a vehicle and it'd start, and then they seemed to have broke that. And maybe they were already intending to add this feature in Phase 3, but maybe it didn't work and they just knocked it ahead to Phase 4. But yeah, now it feels much better because... I can basically read on the screen now. If it says turn on engine, I know it's off. And if it says turn off, I know it's on. Yeah, this little gate. You don't actually need to go fast over there. Again, I got away pretty lucky there. Does the second one take damage? No. Nope. But yeah, I've been over there a few times and I did completely delete one of my trucks. <laughs> 
attempt at it. Right, so once you're outside the garage, what you want to do is get yourself an Azov Antarctic. You don't actually need this ramped flatbed behind. I was going to use it for a bit of extra reach for the next bit we've got coming up. So now we're outside the garage, we're actually pretty close to where we've got to take the stuff. So we're parked there. So you want to drive down here, round there, along this ice again. This rock, stay nice and tight there because to the right it's breakable ice. Go nice and wide here. Park your trucks there for a minute. Both the dolphins, your road train. And then we'll go and fetch the Antarctic. And we're going to cross that little middle section. And then stay as close to the edge of the ice as you can. Because the edges don't break. But pretty much everything else is breakable. We're going to cross that little gap there. Which is breakable ice. And you'll get stuck in most things. But that's one thing the Antarctic is very good for. And I'll explain why. And then we're dropping it off there. That's the Cosmodrome uh, gateway. But obviously it says it's locked at the minute. <clears throat> so this is the... Uh, yeah, double... Double dolphins, I'm outside the garage, setting off. I, uh, was it in this clip? Again, because I juggled them around a bit, I did load a loaf on at some point. Because I had a P12 there and a loaf, so I thought, well, <laughs> it'd be rude not to at this point. Any excuse, and I'm, uh, I'm putting a loaf on. Oh, he's not on at the minute. Oh, there he is. <laughs> he made it in the end. But he might vanish and appear, reappear and all sorts. Because, yeah, the clips are a bit out of order. As far as when I made them, anyway. So yeah, these rocks, like I said, after them, keep nice and tight to the left. You can already hear the ice breaking, see the first sections snapping on my right-hand side of wheel. So yeah, you go much further and it'll just punch your wheels through. It's not really the risk of, like, punching your wheels through. It's that if you tip enough, it'll unpack the cargo, which is just a pain in the arse all around, to be honest. Um, yeah, getting to this point, like I said, park your trucks up here, but essentially take a nice wide route and we'll be cutting across there in a second it's just best to send uh, the Azov Antarctic first and that's what I've got now um, I was thinking this myself if you're going to say ask the question then if this is better at going over the ice or whatever why didn't I say take double Antarctics instead of double dolphins um, the dolphins like for most of the journey I was going along flat ice I was able to get up into high gear motor along pretty nicely it's faster than this this bleeds a lot of power unless you've got low range with the diffs on but obviously when you're in the low range you automatically bleed a lot of speed so long story short the dolphins will get that first section done quicker than this the articulation as well is still not strong enough on this like if you were trying to go diagonally up a hill let's say you're going off towards the left but you're trying to climb up the hill you're trying to turn steering to the left to keep going up the hill but the weight of the front of the truck naturally wants to sag the articulation round to the right. And in this game, it hasn't given it enough oomph to fight against that. So you can actually get in certain situations where it's like, I can't turn the way I need to go because the, the articulation isn't strong enough. But where the Antarctic does shine is crossing ice because one, it's a very tall vehicle. It's got some of the biggest tyres in the game. Maybe not now when they've added a few of the recent things, but... Yeah, they're definitely uh, pretty massive, and the other good thing is with the articulation, it's strong enough to at least break the ice, and the thing is, when you go through the ice in a normal vehicle, it only punches a hole through the ice that's, for the sake of argument, a centimetre wider than the actual truck itself, whereas the Antarctic, because rather than just steering its wheels, it's actually articulating its entire body, once you're stuck in the ice, you can flap around like a fish left and right, and break the ice to give yourself like a foot of spare room either side of the truck. And particularly as the ice is being very glitchy at the minute. If you've just got a vehicle stuck perfectly in the ice. Like there's no give or width either side. That's when it can lock you in place. But because this thing can jiggle around like a fish and kind of make a little bit more room for itself. It's a lot harder for the ice to like glitch you to the point that you can't get out. So um, yeah we're crossing over that little gap there you can see. Drive as close to the edge. You can see now I'm already sinking. I'm trying to turn, but I wasn't quick enough. Yeah, the very edge of this whole river going down is solid. It was, is on every map. I was showing it on... Uh, what was it called? Imandra, I believe I was doing it on one of them as well, where it's just better at the edge. Um, swerved off a little bit there again. You can see there's certain sections where it's like you've got to keep it pretty damn close to the water. It's definitely a little bit of a scary situation because when you're driving along these ice bits, particularly like it did it to me a lot on Star in the Sky mission, the ice can randomly like 
fire itself out of the ground and punch your truck up in the air a bit and being this close to the water is a bit scary. However, I can promise you this is the quickest way. It's just well worth it. Like, the only other option is a massive long route round and you're going to end up encountering various sections of breakable ice and all sorts anyway. So, just <laughs> take my word from it from trial and error. This is definitely the best way. So, you see, this is the point where the uh, Antarctic's doing pretty well at climbing over the ice, but you can see I'm slowly kind of, yeah, flicking the uh, the articulation for the left and right. As well, it's quite nice, because then when you've fully articulated the truck, there's, like, wheels aiming in different directions, so one's trying to pull over to the left or right, and the back's just pushing, and it's all, it just works nicely for crossing. It's probably one of the best vehicles in the game for crossing, like, breakable ice like that. Um, yeah, so once that's over, the reason I've done that, by the way, is because that little section of ice at the end I had to cut through. Uh, this dolphin would probably get stuck if I was doing that on its own. I got stuck in the exact same place yesterday with the Tatrin uh, when I was just doing various different exploration and I was scouting for missions and all sorts. And when I say stuck, I mean stuck as in the ice locked me in place. Like, even if I winched from behind a tree, I couldn't move the Tatrin. I just had to sit there and faff around. I drove a loaf onto the roof. Fortunately, when the Tatrin was sank in the water, in the ice, I could just drive the loaf <laughs> straight up its nose and onto its roof. That added a bit of extra weight on the Tatrin that helped push it down into the ice to get a bit more grip. And eventually I got free. But yeah, it was uh, it was stuck solid. But like I said, because I've sent the Antarctic first, I've already punched a nice gap. So this dolphin will have a little bit of an easy time. Now to be honest, you can see from behind me all the already broken ice... That is a bit of a nightmare corner to get around, especially when you're trying to reverse and three-point turn one of these bloody trailers. But it's worth it in the long run. I mean, worst case, I'll show you in a minute. I did uh, the second vehicle I'm taking over. Again, split them apart, your road train at this point. Just take, uh, yeah, one at a time. It's, you'll never get around that corner successfully if you try and road train it there. Yeah, as you can see, sticking as close as I can to the edge. Now when I drove over here, I actually thought while I was here, I mean, I can, that's why I had the trailer on the back of the Antarctic, because it was just more reach, but the winches are plenty long enough on this. Um, I stuck the winch on there, but then I don't think it's doing anything. It's not driving or anything. And I'm sure at some point I'd disconnect it and just see if I can get out by myself. But long story short, I can pretty much bet money if that ice was all fresh when I just drove into it now, I would get stuck. It's only because the Antarctic has already, like, yeah, smashed it all out of the way that that went a lot smoother. And the Dolphin's pretty solid at climbing through stuff like that. It's just that when you punch through, like, with your front wheels first into the ice, it plunges your front bumper low enough that it'll hook on some ice, and then it's like, your problem's already begun. <laughs> hooked on the trailer, I was like, yep, we'll see. Got more stubborn. I will rip that trailer off if needs be. But yeah, there's uh, one dolphin over the other side. And this, I believe, is a little bit of footage. I mean, it's good. It shows you how much the dolphin can lean, even when I'm tipping and I've got a loaf on the roof. Um, yeah, I still drove back out of there. But, but where I am right now, to the right, is where I just cut over. This is your other option, is following the river all the way down on the edge but as you'll see, it's just... My tyres fell in on that point, to the point where I tipped over 90 degrees. You can still see it going, sinking further. Like, that was just a, yeah, not a good bit. And this was how the game was trolling me tonight as well. I ended up redoing this section, driving back to the garage to re-get the footage. Those trailers, I honestly... I can't stand them. Um, yeah, this is the Dolphin. I got stuck, so I just drove the Antarctic back. There's another good reason to have it sat there, even if you don't necessarily think you'll need it. Instead of faffing around, I mean, I don't know what I'd do otherwise. I've got a loaf on the route. I could jump the loaf off and winch it or whatever, but I didn't really want to jump the loaf off, I'm honest. I wanted to <laughs> keep him on there. But yeah, I just sent the, ta uh, the Antarctic back over the little ice that I'd cut over. Um, back up along the edge of the river. I mean, it was only like 30 seconds away, literally. Yeah, like there. You can see my trailer in the background. Um, yeah, pulled this thing forward. Sent the Antarctic back just to see. And again, with the dolphin, you can see how much it's tipping there, even with that loaf packed. Some people keep asking me, um, to put the loaf on a truck, like I've put it on the roof, on the cargo, all sorts, just get a crane, load the loaf onto it and then go into like the Dolphin in this case and it'll offer you the chance to pack a vehicle like you normally can on a trailer. 
which is good because then yeah he stays anchored on there very well and like I said I've now just got a roof rack on my dolphin and spare fuel and a spare winch and a goddamn horse of a vehicle in general well worth the money <laughs> yes me for an 11 grand van it's been the goddamn bargain of the century um, yeah so now we've got over that bit there's the garage there's just this last little section going up this hill which overall was yeah pretty simple like I said from what I'd heard with this mission and I can definitely see why if I had to go and turn those rolls into beams that would have made this go from a 49 minute video to probably a two part video because it's probably going to be about an hour and a half long or something and there'll be very likely a lot more stress by the end of it I don't know if I'll ever need to go and change some metal rolls into beams but at least if I can get all those bridges built and the landslides fixed and all that it'll be a lot more just a smoother operation to as and when I need to so yeah I kind of I feel bad for anyone who's kind of already had to go and do that and didn't realize they can get metal beams from there again it was a uh, thankfully Omar Aziz kind of specified it because I see, I'd already seen it said yeah access to location but it's like I don't know what it's going to give me it could just give me a load of stuff I don't need so I didn't really know if I need to do it first or not but it's a, yeah, good job I did. I believe I've still got them in a road train at the at the minute. I hit this point. It's yeah, what I've been calling this need death mud. I mean, you've seen the the dolphins usually at least able to move like in mud. But this new stuff, this new stuff doesn't really <laughs> discriminate. It doesn't matter if you've got the best truck, the worst truck, the best tires, the worst tires. It just nails everything. Like, it pretty much makes it a no-go zone and you have to use your winch and like someone said in the comments yesterday like I like using my winch but I don't want to marry it <laughs> like I like the winch as a backup not as the form of travel I've got fuel there I believe that's because I did that bottoms up mission if you have already got that done um, I wouldn't fill up right now because we're about to double back on ourselves if you drive across all that mud with all this cargo and everything you just go slow as yeah like I say, I may as well just, when I'm doubling back on myself in a second, I'll grab some fuel on the way past. So, I get here, I'm getting the loaf off because I don't want to risk unpacking the cargo and the loaf sat on it. You see, the loaf jumps off and you think, oh, he's done. And then he just tips him his way back to some kind of startable position. He's got a winch long enough to reach all the way over there. And then he doesn't just flop on his side. You see, he's a goddamn beast. He's a survivor. So this is like a nuclear apocalypse. There'll just be loafs and cockroaches left. And then the loaf will probably just eat all the cockroaches. There'll be nothing but loafs. Sounds great. Um, yeah, so drop this lot of cargo off. That's six of the twelve. And to be honest, considering this was a a twelve cargo road train on what I would pretty comfortably say is the most trollish map I've experienced so far. I don't know about the next three on this, but yeah, this was a... Uh, at this point, I'm almost like, oh no, what's about to go horrifically wrong? <laughs> because this feels like it went far too smoothly. Although, as you did see... Had a few mishaps on that ice in the middle. But if you check the map, the amount of time saved just by cutting over that little bit of ice, like I said, worst case, switch from your dolphin then just to the Antarctic. You'd have to load the sideboard stuff into the Antarctic, but then just take the trailers that way with two Antarctics from your garage. But either way, it's definitely, uh, yeah. There's not really, if you loop around the long way, there's nowhere because there's other bridges out and all sorts so you're going to have to do some kind of dropping down and cutting over rivers and dodging ice it's just there is no good way when it comes to this last section and um, yeah this is the second one though so what's this got the two wood and four service spare parts again I don't need fuel at the minute so I'll get that on the way on the way back and uh, yeah just to point out as well this is stage one of the uh, what's it called? A heap of work mission. There's a sec second thing to do after this. It's honestly not that bad though. It's actually about as good as you can expect. So drop all them off. It let me load them quicker that time. I have to say it almost panicked me as well. <laughs> they went a bit quick. I was like, oh god. Now I don't know if I do want them to go rapid. I, I do. Um, yeah, so where we're from now, uh, where we are, sorry, you've got to go to the other corner of the map and get a service trailer. The good news is 99% of the way there is as good as it's ever going to get flat smooth roads with like 1% little trollish areas but after what I've already found on this map 
you take that 1% and <laughs> you appreciate it. Because they could have quite easily thrown another 98% in for free. Um, yeah, so like I said, I'll grab a bit of fuel while I'm going past. As you're filling it up, it <laughs> locks your steering. So that's why I sometimes overshoot me a turn in a bit when I, I do that. But I like the fact that you can do drive-by refueling. That's pretty handy. Um, yeah, as you can see, rows now, again, it's another reason though, in fact, that you wouldn't want to do the an bring the Antarctics. The Antarctic hasn't got ice tyres and you would not get up that hill. And even if you do, this hill I'm about to roll down, you would not get back up. And ask me how I know, because when I originally tried to do that bottoms up mission, which was moving a fuel semi-trailer from down there in the water to up here and then back to basically that fuel station um, I had a loaf with muds and I couldn't get up the hill so I went and brought a loaf with chained and then he nailed it um, yeah, this I was enjoying this part of the mission because as you can see <laughs> stuck it in high gear, we're dropping the hammer I managed to jump a loaf back into the sideboard as you do, I'm bringing it with me you never know, I'm not sure if this one's got the autonomous or the advanced winch but either way <laughs> it's moral support loaf at the minute I mean, yeah, look at it, I was having time of my life flying along here. Every second it's like, really? There's no no ice? No cliff I'm going to fly off? No Rockman? Rockman hasn't even been down here. Well, barely. For like a Friday afternoon where he's barely putting any effort in. Um, yeah, loop around a bit, because you can see, if I went the actual main road, there is like a cliff there, a broken bridge. I don't believe there's ever going to be an option to fix that. I don't know, maybe one of the contracts will let you, but I don't care. There's that way to loop around, so that'll do. Oh, it's not going to quite reach that lamppost. But again, I mean, we smashed down into that. It, other trucks could well flip with that. Now it can reach it. I think ages ago, they upped the length slightly of the truck advanced winch because the loaf winch definitely used to be longer whereas I think now they're pretty much the same to be honest I have to do a little test myself with like the bumpers level and see but I'm pretty sure it is about the same now like when I used to ride the loaf in the back of the dolphin I could still reach further forward than the dolphin whereas now I don't think I can they're about the same so then again yeah maybe the loaf's got a meter or two on him then but certainly uh less than it used to be this is about the only little trolley section. I'm kind of driving half on the road, half off it, because, <laughs> well, you can see, it's like sometimes the roads are the bit that they've coded to be death, snow, death, mud, super snow, snoop, super mud. Sometimes at the side, you can get away with it where they just haven't really bothered, and it's, uh, yeah, makes for dropping the hammer, which is always nice. And again, I, well, I left all this gameplay in because uh, I was quite enjoying it I just thought there's no point in making a 10 minute video of me just explaining it and then not really showing it at least this way you can kind of see exactly what I did exactly what went right wrong etc and um, yeah fly into this place loop around here and again it's uh, is it a service trailer is pretty much the same as that curtain side trailer we did for that warehouse trouble mission so yeah nothing particularly heavy or crazy or again it's not cargo so I can't roll it on the way and lose it I can rally this thing to my heart's content. What I was trying to do there, what I do, instead of backing up and grabbing the trailer, was stick a winch on it and then slam your handbrake on and let the trailer catch you up as you hit attached trailer. So I went to do it now to show you, but I started pressing down on my D-pad to scroll to uh, attached trailer, and there's something in my remote, you'll hear my horn and that now. <laughs> it was me smacking my remote, because... There's something shaking inside and it must have gone under the D-pad and it was, yeah, driving me mad. Percussive maintenance, the act of hitting something to fix it, strikes again. Works every time. Like I said, years and years ago I had a TV, like a cathode ray tube TV, like the old school ones. Um, and the colour went all funny and you would think with such a precise instrument, that's it. It went all purple on the screen and I'd moved to the back of the cathode ray tube, it wasn't good. I genuinely hit the top of the telly and it fixed itself and it never ever ever did anything wrong ever until I probably got rid of it because I got like a HD TV by that point but yeah that was like the I still remember it now because I feel like I out magicked science because of maintenance is the way to go never looked back since give something a little tap <laughs> it's good to go for another year it's basically like adding a year's warranty 
smack it. Every time you smack it, <laughs> it gets newer. It does in my head anyway. So this is back out of the village. What did I drop off here? Yes. Oh yeah, it's that at the Apex mission. I dropped off that Dom 71 about here, I believe. But again, as you can see, all things considered, been pretty relaxed on the kind of super terrain in general. And once we're back out here, it's as near as makes no difference, a pretty free free flowing run along the road. And yeah, as I said, this is like why I use Chained, because I genuinely, I just, I'm no good at remembering when I jump on a different map to be like, oh, which tyres do I want? It's only when I hit roads like this and then I've not got the chain on, I'm like, oh, crap, so. But I'm not, I've never said that I think Chained are, like, better than the MUDs, or its main competition, really, as in they're just outright better. In certain situations, I've got a feeling they behave, the MUD Chained behave as MUDs, with the bonuses of Chained, but they still have all the stats of MUDs. However, I do believe there is sections where the MUD beat the Chained. It's just that the ceiling of them is I can get everywhere with Chained or MUDs. There's n I've never had a situation where it's like I can't get somewhere with Chained and I've, I've come back with MUDs and I can. I mean, the MUDs might be able to go 8 mile an hour when the Chained are only doing 4 mile an hour on some specific terrain like heavy snow or something, but... Yeah, it's uh, there's also situations where the muds do 0, 0.0 miles an hour up a icy hill road, and the chain will just tick along as normal. So it's just they're just hassle-free. Like I said, fit and forget. I have put chain on just about everything. Not everything though. My Tager's got muds on. My Loafs, favourite vehicle in the game. They've pretty much all got muds on. I very reluctantly have stuck chain on a few, but I've got to be honest, I don't really like chain on the loaf. But again, they're not mud chained on the loaf. They're sort of like, the, I assume, the all terrain ones, they're just not as good. I mean, this little section's not too bad. To be fair, if you did have muds at this point, you'd be fine getting up this hill because it's more snowy than just a. like a black ice road. But yeah, the views are looking pretty good. The fog looks like it's kicking in a bit, but nothing too special. I'm quite happy with the. I don't know, amount of fog, if you know what I mean. I'm nuts on it. I don't know what the hell happened with my camera there. Made me panic and dropped my hammer. Like, just outrun it. I mean, it's a scientific fact. The faster you're going, the less likely you are to tip over. I mean, nobody in the history of humanity has ever tipped over whilst going the speed of light. I think you'll find that is a scientifically, factually accurate statement. So, it's got to be right. But yeah, it does work on this game, I'm not just <laughs> taking the piss, like, the faster you're going, your truck hasn't always got time to tip over. A bit like, I suppose, riding a bike, ride a bike at one mile an hour, it's a lot harder than riding a bike at ten miles an hour. Same principle applies. So you're zipping along here, there's my fuel station to the right, here's uh, the Cosmodrome entrance, like, well, get out of the way trailer. See again, this always makes me laugh with a loaf. I was about to ram the trailer into the loaf, the loaf's like, bitch. Didn't you ever poke me with a trailer? Loaf just took it like a boss. Made my dolphin stop dead and everything. Um, yeah, what is it? 17 and a half grand. Not insane. I think it should be more like 25, but whatever. I don't really care. The fact that it's unlocked Cosmodrome and we can get in going and do the things I won't mention too much because of spoilers, but for those of you that heard the beginning, <laughs> you know what we're talking about. Um, yeah, it's job done. I'm just going to go and quickly travel through the gateway and show you like the load up picture and just literally I'm not driving anywhere I'm just gonna load up in it and we're done uh, there's the picture there's a rocket so I assume somebody said something about could my loaf fly that rocket I don't know if you ever get to watch that rocket take off but I am gonna be prepared for such a situation and I am gonna try and load a loaf on there if that's ever gonna take off so we need to know these things the Elon loaf space loaf not SpaceX loaf X um, yeah I mean look at him I never mind the dolphins ass that's the main attraction right there. But yeah, that's about it. I mean, this is the Cosmodrome map. I will be exploring it very, very soon. But that's about it for today, though. I, I certainly recommend this way for it to be done, really. I think it's the quickest, best way to go. But yeah, that's about it for today. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for our Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf, and I'll be back soon.